Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use this simple and cheap buck converter to directly power your Raspberry Pi, as well as installing much, much quieter cooling fans. If you're like me, you're running out of power points. My Octoprint installation until now comes from a separate plug going into the wall, and that takes up a lot of real estate. If you're also like me, you want your printer to be as quiet as possible. And let's face it, the stock hot end cooling fan is hardly quiet. It's prone to buzzing and making all sorts of weird vibrations. Trouble is you can't change it very easily because all the quiet fans don't come in 24 volts like the printer is powered by. We're gonna use these simple little things called buck converters. A buck converter is simply a colloquial name for a voltage regulator. These ones that I'm using are adjustable and they are extremely cheap. The good news is they're capable of supplying three amps reliably, which is great because a typical Raspberry Pi is meant to draw up to 2.5 amps. There are some other ingredients here. Fortunately, individually, they're all quite cheap and the links to them are all in the description. In this video, I'm working on the end of three and they use an XT60 plug. So the first thing we need is an XT60 double adapter. We're also gonna need some bare XT60 plugs to solder to our buck converters. And the other thing you'll see me use a lot is this DuPont wiring kit and matching crimping tool. Now the crimping tool and the wiring kit is something I use all of the time. If you own a 3D printer, this is the type of thing you just wanna have lying around anytime you wanna repair or wire up something new. Now take care when you're buying, you need to get your male and female ends correct, otherwise you'll order parts like I did that don't actually fit in. Let's get on with it. The first thing we're gonna do is work step by step to wire up our first buck converter and that is gonna power the Raspberry Pi directly from the printer's power supply. Let's start by taking out our bare XT60 plugs and matching them up to our double adapter. We don't want to solder the wrong one into place. After that, we can take some thick gauge wire, strip the outside shielding, and then strip the ends of the wires ready to solder into place. Now I highly recommend pre-soldering the inside of the plug and the wire, which means later on, you just need to heat up both and they'll add together very easily. Also, don't forget to add your heat shrink before you solder everything together because it's going to be too late to add it afterwards. Place your wires into position. Both ends already have solder on them. So simply apply your soldering iron and the two should melt together. After that, you can slide down your heat shrink, seal everything up so it can't short. Now all we have to do is to repeat for the other side. So solder it, slide down the heat shrink, use the heat to seal it up and then your first plug is complete. With quite a short length, we are going to cut and strip the other end because that side is going to go into the buck converter. The buck converter is clearly labeled which sides are the inputs and which sides are the outputs, as well as the positive and negative terminals for each. Now this first plug we've already made is going to go into the input side and the thickness of the wire is a little bit too much to go through the holes, but that's okay. I'm going to solder everything to get rid of the loose wires. Just going to push it as neatly as I can with my finger, solder on the top, spin it upside down, solder on the bottom. We're going to repeat for our second wire, soldering top and bottom, making sure there are no loose wires in the way that could accidentally short. Now we have to do the output of our buck converter, so we strip more of the same gauge wire and we're going to insert it in exactly the same way to the output terminals, solder it so there's no loose wires, and now we are ready to insulate with a large piece of heat shrink. This stuff is just perfect. You're going to slide it over the top, apply some mild heat with either a lighter or a hairdryer, and it will shrink around and protect any chance of shorting. All you need to do is make a little hole so you can access the adjustment for the output voltage, and your unit is almost done. At this point, we need to come to the printer, unplug the original connection, plug in our double adapter, into one end of the double, we plug in our original printer wiring, and then of course into the other one comes our new buck converter plug. After this, we're gonna lift up and route our wiring to the front of the printer. Our aim here is to get everything into position so we know what length to cut the wiring that's going to run to the Raspberry Pi. That way we can make our install as neat as possible. You put it roughly in place, cut it, and then strip the wires, ready to set the output voltage of the buck converter. To do that, I used alligator clips to hold on the probes of the multimeter, making sure not to short them together. And then I twisted the adjustment with a screwdriver on the back until it was down to just under five volts to suit the requirements of the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna start using our DuPont wiring kit. That can be a little bit tricky. So what you wanna do is place your terminal just in and then wiggle your wire in from the other side. Everything should be held in place. And once you feel it's in, give it a nice squeeze and it will be crimped. Time to repeat for the second wire. If you butcher anything, just cut it shorter, strip and start again. This thickness gauge of wire is a little bit overkill and makes it hard to wire these up neatly. But you should be able to still push them in, the little tab faces towards the hole and they should click into place. 
So where do we plug this into the Raspberry Pi? As you can see from this diagram, we need to do it to the top right when looking from above and we skip one pin and then have the positive and then the next pin down is the ground. With the power off, I carefully put it into position, pushing it down till it's seated and then turn the power on. Hopefully if you've done everything right, no magic smoke comes out and you're able to reconnect to your Octoprint install via your web browser. Now, one of my patrons has cleverly suggested that there is a simpler way to avoid buck converters for this exact purpose. Your Raspberry Pi and your mainboard probably aren't that far apart. So you can make up a simple two wire connector to go from the main board to the Raspberry Pi using the wiring diagram as follows. But you might want to check for your 3D printer if the onboard voltage regulator can supply enough current for the printer and a Raspberry Pi on top. Let's move on to the subject of hot end cooling fan noise. Now, unfortunately on the end of three, it's hardwired to be on all of the time. So even when the printer is sitting there idle, this thing is going to be buzzing away. Our aim is to use a high quality knock to a fan to take it from this down to this. Now knock to a fans don't come in 24 volt models. So once again, we're gonna use our cheap buck converters to get everything working together nicely. We are after the fan that is permanently on cooling the hot end and that is in the lower left of this diagram. By default, the two wires are loose and they simply go into the screw terminals. I decide to wire that up to a male DuPont connector which will still go into the screw terminals but will also go into an input for another buck converter. That one gets a male connector on the mainboard input side and a female connector on the output side. Here it is with the male end put into the screw terminals, therefore receiving 24 volts. I plug in the original hot end fan wires and they are going to go to this 12 volt knock to a fan. So please don't forget to adjust your buck converter down to whatever voltage fan you're using. I cut the fan connector at about 100 mils and add a male DuPont connector. You won't need the yellow wire that's used for delivering RPM. And then I fold back the protective sheathing and cut and insert a female DuPont connector at an appropriate length. Plug it in, fire up the printer and be greeted by this. Let me tell you that is so much better. Now when my printer is sitting there idle, I forget that it's even turned on. If the fan on your main board is also too noisy for you, you can do the same mod here using a single buck converter because fans draw very little current. Assuming you fitted stepper motor dampers, the last loud thing on your printer is gonna be the part cooling fan. Now I reckon the stock 4010 blower isn't actually that loud, but the trouble is when a lot of people substitute in a 5015 fan with an aftermarket cooling duct, becomes a lot louder, but fortunately we can fix it without even using a butt converter, using some tricks in the slicing software and the firmware. The main board regulates voltage to the fan using something called PWM. A 50% duty cycle for PWM effectively means 50% the voltage. Therefore, by limiting our maximum PWM value, we can limit how much voltage is sent to the fan. Therefore, if you like, in your slicing software, you can change all of your cooling settings to have a maximum percentage value to regulate your voltage. Therefore, if you were switching from a 24 to 12 volt fan, make sure your maximum value is set to 50%. If you're comfortable poking around with firmware, you can also set your max fan PWM in the firmware, and therefore you won't need to change any of your slicing settings. Once again, we simply divide our value. So if we were switching from 24 to 12, we'll change it from 255 to 125. Just in case you didn't believe me, here's 100% PWM delivering 24 volts and only 50% PWM delivering just over 12 volts. Just like with the hot end cooling fan, I cut and installed a female DuPont connector on the wires coming from the main board. Therefore, I need matching male wires and I can quickly change between any of these part cooling fans. Okay, so we know how to step down the maximum voltage delivered to the part cooling fan. I'm using a 12 volt fan here, so just how loud is it? Louder, yes, but the real noise comes from the PWM when you run the fan at lower voltages, for instance, if you didn't want it blowing at its maximum capacity. Fortunately, there's another easy fix we can do in the firmware to get rid of this whine. You're simply gonna search for and uncomment fansoft PWM in configuration.h. Let's listen to what this does and see if it gets rid of the whine. I've also read that you can wire in a capacitor in parallel to smooth out the signal of the PWM, further reducing the whine. Unfortunately, my results didn't show that that really made any difference.
Just be careful that if you are going this route, most capacitors are rated at 16 volts, which of course is going to explode on a 24 volt system. That's going to wrap this one up. There was a lot of input and requests from my patrons for this one. So hopefully I've delivered something that's helpful for you as well as them. When I tested cooling fan ducts, a lot of people were asking me how to fit the larger duct. Hopefully this video is useful for that purpose as well. Please leave a comment if you've had success with any of these. And until next time, thanks so much for watching and happy quieter 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.